So let's talk about the most powerful units of the Heretic Astartes with the rough top 9 strongest Chaos Space Marine datasheets in Warhammer 40k. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics where today we're talking Chaos Space Marines and in this video I thought we'd take a look through a whole bunch of good stuff for the faction with what some of the best players around are taking in their army lists and why. At the moment the Chaos Marines maybe have a slightly odd place in terms of balance currently. Their average tournament performance is kind of low, around about 45% wins at big events, which does mean that the average player is struggling slightly versus the rest of the 40k field, compared with the average a bit harder to win with than most. However, it seems that for people who know the faction really well, are on the top army list and know the exact right things to do with them in-game, they're still having massive amounts of success for event wins, 9 big tournament wins since the balanced data slates that nerfed a bunch of Chaos units, and that's certainly extremely towards the upper end of factions winning tournaments right now. So kind of encouraging to know that they can do well in the right hands. They've still got pretty high play rates as well, which means that while a bunch of units got toned down, people still are having fun putting them on the tabletop. They are usually popular, but they're still among one of the most popular factions in the game at tournaments. For this video, I thought it could be interesting to take a look at some of the most commonly played units and competitive lists, looking at a cross-section of around about 15 or so competitive chaos lists that have done really quite well in tournaments since the last balance updates. I thought we'd talk through 9 of the units that tend to come up most frequently in top players good lists, and then a few more honourable mentions for things that come up a lot but maybe weren't quite as frequent. Obviously good units will vary a lot depending on the detachment and just what sort of environment you're using them in, whether it's more casual or more competitive. For Chaos Detachments at the moment the Renegade Raiders tends to be the most played one with its fast moving and extra AP things. The Pack Down Zealots and the Soul Forge War Pack are the next most popular after that, and definitely choice of detachment does impact which units get strong or not, maybe in particular for that War Pack, given it makes the Demon Engine so much better. In any case though, let's jump right into it and start out with some of the expendable grunts. The Cultist Mob is just 50 points, and does tend to be at least a fairly easy include for army lists. 50 points for a unit to be able to do an action, have 10 objective control, and provide the sticky objectives rule is a pretty reasonable combo. There's lots of value in 10th edition 40k to just units literally being placeholders as units, even if you really don't expect them to do anything particularly significant in terms of damage. They certainly lost a little bit of value from the index of the codex when they can't take their special weapons anymore like grenade launchers, though it wasn't really their primary purpose anyway. They can use the sticky objectives rule maybe to start on the home field objective and make sure that that's yours until the enemy can physically take it away. And then depending on what you're fighting, they could spread out a bit and try and screen out the backfield from enemy deep strikers or reserves, or push up to the mid boards to try and get that rule in play on a far-flung objective. They'll die pretty fast to any volume fire, and their damage output is bad. At least I guess they can flex into lethal hits if you literally need a little bit of damage through with those melee weapons. And they do have the grenade keyword as well, if they need to surprise, say, one enemy elite unit with a little bit of mortal wound fire. You definitely wouldn't want to go too heavy on them, as I feel like there's diminishing returns on multiple copies of that sticky objectives rule though. Next up, for a bit of Traitor Legion fire support, we've got the Chaos Predator Destructor, 140 points after the points increase, and this tank is a common pick in lots of armies, just a staple general purpose gun turret that's going to be strong enough to threaten enemy armour, but can also put in quite a lot of work against elite infantry too. The auto cannon gets 6 shots at strength 9, AP 1, damage 3 to 24 inches, and 4 shots outside of that. You get 2 last cannon shots and some volume fire from either a combi weapon or combi bolter and a havoc launcher on top. All of those can get an extra AP minus 1 against infantry, particularly good for the auto cannon, and often getting sustained hits from a dark pact if lethal hits doesn't make more sense. They perhaps feel particularly nice in Renegade Raiders where you can have AP 3 auto cannons versus tough infantry on objectives. That's enough to be stacking a lot of good damage on things like Terminators in cover. And they also get the Assault keyword as well, so they can move extra fast when they need to gain lines of sight. Pat Bound Zealots and the Nurgle Mark is pretty nice for sustained hits as well, and potentially being able to use the Can't Shoot Me style stratagem. That one can always be a bit disruptive if the opponent say half kills this and then wants to try and finish it off. Next up we've got your standard transport in the Chaos Rhino, 75 points for a standard cheap and effective method of getting Space Marines from A to B. Certainly not really particularly stand out on its own datasheet compared with wider 40k, but an absolute staple in Chaos lists as it's got good stuff to transport, maybe Chosen or Legionaries, maybe even Allied Rubik Marines in the Renegade Raiders detachment. As with lots of transports in the game, it's just quite a nice mobile bunker for a unit to charge out of, even if it's just sat in the deployment zone, then if the opponent pushes up, it effectively adds an extra 3 inches to your threat range as you can disembark that far and then move and then charge. 
or if that's not going to be possible, then it can maybe move up into the midfield, ideally behind cover, but it is quite tough for the cost. It can maybe use the smoke stratagem, and even if it does get shot down, you might still be able to disembark the squad somewhere safe behind cover. For Legionaries and Chosen, I think it works basically in all detachments, though again it's kind of standout in Renegade Raiders, one command point for four rerolls to hit and wound against something on an objective after disembarking is big, particularly for Chaos Chosen. In general, even for delivering melee stuff, they tend to get played quite a lot more than land raiders, which is still rated as very usable indeed, but it just seems that most people come down on it using the units that doesn't cost as big an investment for achieving a similar sort of thing. And I feel that part of the decision is also because they've got easy access to advance and charge. Chosen can do it at base, and Legionaries can do it in pack bound or renegade raiders as well. And while spending stratagems is a downside, it does mean that a rhino can have the same sort of charge threat range as a land raider. Next up, for some fast and efficient skirmishing outriders, we've got the Chaos Bikers. These guys are unlikely to be the main damage punch, but just for 70 points, it's hard to go too far wrong with a unit or two of them. They're a nice cheap and fast unit for rushing around the board, doing secondaries or contesting primaries, being kind of expendable. But also, given their speed and how cheap they are, they're surprisingly tough and surprisingly dangerous, so just tend to be a bit of a win all around. They've got a 12-inch move and 6 objective control, so could maybe secure objectives against certain enemy elites. I think their toughness is fine for 9 wounds at toughness 5, pretty solid for 70 points. And then for their range damage they can have a couple of melter guns at range, plus 3 combi bolters and a sergeant weapon. A little bit scatter gun and general purpose, but should take a chunk out of both elite infantry and hordes. And then in melee they get 8 attacks with their chainsaws, plus a power fist, or with plus 1 strength on the charge which is nice, plus dark packs which you can reroll with their chaos icon as well. Between all that, they've got a pretty reasonable chance to just wipe out a unit of their equivalents in another army in a single round of shooting and fighting. Again, for detachments, they work well in both Renegade Raiders and Pat Bound. The Raiders one gives you advanced shoot and charge, which is pretty big, and can even auto-advance 6 inches for a single command point as well. And again, that could be pretty great for reaching certain areas of the board to do secondaries or contest primaries. They also get an icon to allow them to re-roll dark packs, which is good for Pat Bound too. Overall, I feel like they're just quite nice skirmishers and very good for objective support while also bullying enemy objective units, and probably the single biggest negative to them is the age of their models. I feel like Games Workshop need to release a proper set of them that are kind of similar sort of scale to the Primaris Outriders at some stage. Next up, on the HQ front, I feel like there's really no beating the Chaos Lord. 90 points for reduced cost stratagem support and really quite scary brawling potential. The minus one command point stratagem is good for all sorts of things, now you can use it on things beyond battle tactics. It's good for the armour of contempt equivalent in Renegade Raiders or Advance and Charge, and could do things like undivided rerolls in Pat Bound Zealots, or just a bunch of core book stratagems like throwing grenades around, rerolling a failed charge or heroic intervention. Then to back that up, he can either help Legionaries or Chosen get a whole load more damage. He gets five attacks at strength eight, AP two, and damage two with either a power fist or a demon hammer. And then once the game goes into rage mode where you get 6 attacks at strength 9, AP 3 and damage 3. Pairing with either legionaries or chosen. Chosen giving more threat range and advance and charge. And legionaries potentially giving you 4 rerolls against things on objectives. Really quite big for devastating wounds and his sort of mid strength profile punching up against things. Overall he does add quite a lot of value. And if he wanted a very character heavy squad he could even pair with the master of executions. Though he's certainly the one that I'd want first out of those. Next up, we've got another great big gun in the Chaos Vindicator. 185 points for a great big dedicated gun tank with a whole load of anti-armor. It's nicely tough with 11 wounds at toughness 11 and a 2 plus save. Good with cover, good with smoke and the armor of contempt stratagem in Renegade Raiders. And then the punchy demolisher cannon. D6 plus 3 shots at strength 14, AP3 and damage D6. Usually with sustained hits from dark packs. It doesn't have to worry about getting locked up in melee as much as some, given that it can fire directly into melee, and also does so at no penalty. Just for its damage and defence, it's pretty handy when skirmishing with enemy equivalents. For detachment things, the Nurgle mark in pack bound is pretty fearsome. Sustained hits on a 5 plus is really nasty for this kind of weapon. And again, like the Predator enjoys Renegade Raiders, the assault key was to get that big gun line of sight and into range of important things, plus AP-4 against units on objectives is genuinely helpful. Even more power against 3 plus saves or better, and particularly so for stacking save things like Armour of Contempt and Cover. It could also be one of the better choices for that possession style stratagem in the Soulforged War Pack too. 
Overall, quite a nasty tank and one the opponent has to treat seriously and really quite a lot of investment to bring one down if it can get cover and wants to use an armour of contempt stratagem or so. Next up, it's quite nice to see the standard Chaos Space Marines actually deserve a place on this list. I feel like for a lot of 40k's more recent history before 10th edition, they've really been kind of lacklustre. The Legionaries cost 90 points per 5 or 180 points per 10 and do quite well as frontline battle line troops. Space Marine defensive profiles, which I'd say is probably their biggest weakness given that certain profiles like plasma guns kill them really quickly, and a lot of objective control to claim objectives that they're scrapping over. Compared with most battle line troops for 90 points though, they're just far more dangerous. A squad of 5 of them could have a last cannon and plasma pistol at range, or some other heavy weapon if you wanted one, and then charge in with a bunch of chainsaw attacks and two power fist equivalent heavy melee weapons. Then with the usual dark packs to amp up the damage further, where they've got the icon to re-roll the leadership, plus inbuilt wound re-rolls of 1, going up to full wound re-rolls against foes on objectives, a massive boost for any of their mid-strength weapons, particularly those heavy melee ones, and it also works on Chaos Lords as well. So as mentioned, can mean that he's getting 4 re-rolls to wound with Power Fists or Demon Hammers. They're also very nasty with the Master of Executions. Being the standard Chaos troops, they get really good value from pretty much most of the detachments too. Renegade Raiders doubles down really nicely with their 4 wound re-rolls on objectives. Extra AP means they're just a lot more scary against things that they otherwise wouldn't be so much. They're kind of popular to take with the Marcus Lanesh for sustained hits on a 5+, plus, plus the option to advance and charge impact bounds. And basically all the other detachments can have some good use for them, whether it's Deceptors, Infiltrate, Shenanigans, or being weirdly tanky with the minus 1 to wound debuff in Fellhammer, or plenty of things in the Veterans of the Long War one. Perhaps for one of the units that's maybe a little bit more borderline between putting here versus the honourable mentions were the Accursed Cultists. I feel like they're maybe not quite as commonly taken as a few of the rest, but lots of people seem to really really like them still. They are perhaps a deceptively scary unit though, 90 points for a unit of 8 of them, getting you 3 Torments and 5 Mutants. A fairly tough blob with a whole bunch of 6 plus feel no pain, and kind of nice that you can tank certain shots on the different models depending on the damage profiles. Their big thing that makes them an absolute handful on midfield objectives is their reactive move that they can do. It means that if they're, say, trying to contest a mid-board objective and then the opponent shoots them with something, they can often just surge move straight into combat with something, really messing up other enemy shooting. On paper, their damage output doesn't look crazily scary, mainly having a sort of heavy bolter-style profile at strength 5, AP 1 and damage 2 from the big guys. But with the buffs that they can access, it often gets surprisingly nasty. Dark Patch will give them lethal hits or sustained hits if that makes more sense. Renegade Raiders boost AP, which makes them a lot nastier against medium infantry, and they could potentially use Chaos Undivided for the stratagem for the full wound rerolls in pack bounds. They can normally scout into the mid-board as well, unless they're accompanied by a Dark Commune, basically deciding whether or not they want to be a lot more mighty or to be able to push forward early. The Dark Commune is really big for the amount of damage and defence it gives them though, a 5 plus invulnerable save, Reroll in the dark packs so you're less likely to take some mortal wound damage there and a huge turn of advance and charge with plus one to hit and wound on one big turn giving them a bit of a disturbing threat range and allowing them to rip a whole load of wounds off things that they normally wouldn't be able to. If you want to run Chaos Cult as well this is the unit that it's basically built around. They can be ridiculously quick here zooming from one side of the board to the other and really disruptive with those reactive moves and there's good enhancements and stratagems to make them even more dangerous too. It does seem that a few people have been having good success with that detachment at grand tournaments, using it as a disturbing board control style army. They can still punch surprisingly hard with big units of these when they need to. Finally for the main 9 units I chose to feature, we've got the Chaos Chosen, 125 points per squad of 5 of them, or 250 per 10. Basically dangerous melee elites where they're competing with legionaries for spots in rhinos with Chaos Lords. These guys add more danger and more threat inside the rhino with free wounds and better damage profiles, but do have some downsides like none of the good rerolls on objectives, and they don't have as much objective control. They get to advance and charge built in, which means that if they were moving out of a rhino, the 3 inch disembark, the 6 inch move, and then advance and charge, usually means they've got a threat range of around about 19 to 20 inches or so, which is pretty huge. And when they get there, they'll have a whole bunch of accursed weapons, 4 attacks each at strength 5, AP 2 and damage 1, and then normally one twin-linked paired set for 5 attacks, and one power fist per 5 too. A 
Again, they're pretty awesome in combination with a Chaos Lord who can allow them some free stratagems and things. And for detachment and stuff, they enjoy Renegade Raiders for the four hit rerolls to hit and wound after jumping out of a transport. That's really good with those slightly lower strength but okay AP general purpose damage profiles. And being undivided in pack bound again for four wound rerolls. Though I guess you could go Slanesh as well if you wanted. Overall, they seem to be kind of equally commonly picked as legionaries. It's kind of hard to go too far wrong with either of them or both of them in rhinos charging into the midboard. Finally, I thought we'd just round up a few more honourable mentions, things that often get played a lot, but perhaps could be a little bit more take or leave. Some people choosing to build around them, but some people passing them up for other things. For big synergy things, there's Abaddon the Despoiler and a Hellbrute, who often could be paired together. Abaddon gives a bunch of vehicles with big guns re-roll hits, and the Hellbrutes make their dark pats go off extra nastily, and that means that you can have a spectacularly scary shooting gun base, say buffing a bunch of Chaos Predators or Forge Fiends or something. Abaddon's pretty massive in his own right, it's kind of enormous points commitment, but his re-roll hits thing is a really big centerpiece buff, and it's got massive melee threat in his own right as well. Generally he tends to be fielded either with Chosen or Solo, not with Terminators, due to the extra cost of them being a bit inefficient compared with some. The Hellbrute's particularly nice with Pat Bound Zealot's detachments as well, given that they get the boosted versions of the Dark Pats. Otherwise, Warp Talons still seem to be played quite a lot, despite the big increase in points. It's 270 points per unit of 10 of them now, which is a big investment, but still their damage and then Warp Away ability is kind of massive. It means that each turn they should be jumping in, murdering in a unit of enemy chaff and then returning to reserves, and then dropping somewhere safe with rapid ingress next turn to do it all over again. Still seems that plenty of people are taking them, though a lot of people are deeming them too many points for that utility now. They are a unit that needs really quite careful play. You really don't want to hit something that you can't quite kill with them and then get them counter-attacked very hard. They might not necessarily kill their points back in terms of deleting objective scoring units, but hopefully it does enough to overall tip victory points in your favour, and they can certainly stay on the board and do a few more normal unit things with scoring and taking a little bit of damage in the late game. Otherwise, the Forge Fiend's probably worth mentioning as a fairly general purpose gun turret, but not quite as popular as the Vindicator or Predator after Codex release and a points rise. It's a bit more popular in Soul Forge Warpack, where the plus one to wound is really big on those ectoplasma cannons, or Pat Bound Zealots with the undivided devastating wound rerolls. Finally, Cypher, I think, is worth a shout to. Very dangerous lone operative that can solo squads of light to medium infantry. It's a bit annoying to kill and return, and can just do lone operative things, wandering around and being safe, screening things and doing secondaries, where the enemy just can't really relax against his damage output with all the plasma and bolt pistol shots between range and melee. There are still plenty of things that feel kind of notably lesser played for Chaos Marines though, lots of things that you just don't really see in tournament lists very regularly. Still seems that Terminators aren't really considered a go-to, and are a bit overcosted for their overall value proposition, Possessed aren't taken as much, now they don't get the devastating wounds each time they charge. Obliterators lost a whole load of value in the codex, and I'd say are a bit overcosted right now for what they bring versus other firepower. And there's a few other things that have been overcosted since the index, like the Lord Discordant on Hellstalker or the Helldrake, amongst others. Will be interesting to see where Games Workshop takes them from here. I feel like while Chaos Space Marines are winning lots of tournaments and things, they're probably unlikely to get any sort of major buffs. I feel like it would be quite nice to help out maybe a few of the choices on this list though, at least relative to the rest, as it does feel like competitive army lists are taking quite a lot of the same choices these days and passing up some others. In any case though, I think I'll leave that there for this one. Let me know what you make of the Chaos Space Marine units and their strength down in the comments below. What have you been feeling has been worth the points investment or not these days? If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, or certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming, I do tend to post new ones just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep all this content coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.